What's going on guys? So today I decided it'd be kind of fun to do a quick little experiment to showcase and determine how exactly case airflow can affect the behavioral properties of a system. This is my own personal streaming system with a Ryzen 7 3700X, currently overclocked to 4.1 gigahertz on all cores, 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 at 3600 speed, an MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 2070 Super, and our case, the Fantex Eclipse P400A. And the reason why I've chosen this system to test today is mainly because of this case. Because guys recall, this is the one that has the almost fully mesh front panel. So it's a good starting off point to see what a best case scenario might look like in terms of uh, chassis airflow. And then we're gonna slowly but surely add more and more strips of duct tape to the front panel, as well as the top, which is mostly all open ventilation as well, to see how it affects a number of things, including acoustics, temperatures, clock speeds, and frame rates. And of course, we can already expect that all those factors are going to worsen as we apply more duct tape and constrict airflow further, but to exactly what degree, haha, <laughs> we will hopefully be able to nail down by the end of the this video. Now a couple notes really quick about how I have the system set up here. We have a 120 exhaust at the rear and the top. Those are just wired directly to the motherboard so they may ramp up and down a little bit during testing but I do have all the other fans, pretty much all the other fans in the system fixed uh, which includes the two 120s that are on our liquid AIO radiator that's currently cooling our 3700X. Those are fixed at 50% fan speed and then we also have uh, our GPU fans fixed at 50% as well. The only other fan that would be sort of dynamic right now is the chipset fan on our X570 uh, chipset so that's probably going to ramp up and down a little bit as well and maybe get uh, noisier as we uh, as we go along here. On the software side, I'm going to be using Unigen Heaven 4.0 as our testing application. So the first test, again, is going to be the system as is with no impeded airflow, no tape on it whatsoever. In the second test, I'll apply duct tape to the front and top panels that covers roughly 75% of the surface area. And then finally, we're really going to try to choke this mother effort by applying tape to roughly 90% of the surface area. Sadly, this is probably going to be a more realistic test than you might imagine. There have been case trends now uh, with a very sleek and minimalistic design on the front and top panels, which unfortunately blocks a lot of airflow and impedes a lot of fresh intake or exhaust that can really hurt uh, your system's performance. And that's also why we're not gonna touch uh, or tape up any of the backside of the case because case manufacturers don't do anything back there because you can't see it. There's no point. It's not visible uh, to most users, so they, they just leave it alone, which is kind of funny that the backside of the case is usually the most consistently well-ventilated part of a chassis these days. On the software side, I'm gonna run Unigen Heaven 4.0 for 15 minutes for all three tests and uh, at the end of those 15 minutes I'm going to log all the data and then immediately jump into the actual benchmark so we can get an FPS reading as well. So that's what's on the agenda today should be pretty interesting. I'm going to go ahead and start testing and then I'll circle back once I have all of our data. All right, the results are in and we can talk about the data now, but right off the bat, I wanted to mention that our ambient temperature was 73 degrees Fahrenheit or roughly 23 degrees Celsius throughout our entire testing. It did not stray away from that point. I have the AC on running consistently. So let's take a look first at temperatures. These are the max temp values uh, in degrees Celsius after 15 minutes of Unigen Heaven 4.0 at 2560 by 1440. And you can see right off the bat that we are getting increased temperatures as we impede the case's airflow. But starting with our CPU, uh, having zero tape on the case, our CPU was maxing out at 54.1 degrees Celsius. Not too shabby at all, and uh, definitely what you would expect with that 240 millimeter liquid AIO. Add on enough tape to cover roughly 75% of the surface area of the front and top panel, however, and we spike up to 59.8 degrees, uh, or roughly 10.5% of an increase. With 90% of the ventilation cut off, we saw a nearly 24% increase in CPU temperatures over the best case scenario at uh, 67 degrees Celsius. Thermally speaking, our CPU has definitely hit the hardest out of everything that we tested here, and I think that's mainly because it's relying solely on those two radiator fans for all of its cooling. As soon as you compromise those and you choke those off, particularly at 90% tape application, there's really no other assisted cooling that the CPU receives uh, elsewhere in the case, unlike the GPU. As you can see, our GPU started out at 68C, which is really not too bad at all for an RTX 2070 Super, uh, and then it went up to 74C once we we cranked it up to 75% tape. That's an 8.8% increase on thermals. And then up to 76 or 11.7% with a 90% tape application. Now, I think there's a couple reasons why the GPU wasn't hit quite as hard as the CPU was. I think the first reason is that uh, we have a pretty effective uh, add-in board partner cooler uh, design on the GPU. It's been very highly reviewed. This is why add-in board partner uh, GPUs costs quite a bit more, um, especially with custom PCBs and things like that. Um, it's just a really good card. 
with a great cooler. And the other factor at play here is that we have two exhaust fans, the rear and top fans, that are constantly pulling heat away from the GPU and ejecting it out of the case. That's bound to help some. I also think that the GPU at some point, especially when we started applying more tape on the front panel and constricting that area, the GPU fan started to intake air from the back of the case, notably the expansion slots that are all vented, as well as the fairly large gap that's just to the right of those expansion slots. I think that was serving as the new intake for our GPU when we started cutting off the front panel. And that's not ideal by any stretch. Uh, you shouldn't ever have to depend on the back of your case to get most of your intake. However, with the exhaust fans above it, that does mean the GPU is potentially put in a much better airflow path and had a lot much more circulation uh, in its area than the CPU did in this case. Our chipset VRM and SSD also saw some significant temperature increases, uh, primarily anywhere between the 9 and 12% range. 92 degrees Celsius on our chipset uh, with 90% tape is, is definitely, it's definitely not where you want to be in most cases. I also think the VRM could potentially be at a slight disadvantage here because we aren't using an air CPU cooler, um, which would have helped circulate some of the air in that area. Now it's worth noting that the sound levels remained more or less consistent throughout all three of our tests because the noisiest fans in the system, which are the GPU fans and the radiator fans, were set at fixed RPM. On the contrary, most users are probably just gonna run their, their components at the factory out of the box settings, which is generally an automated fan curve uh, for components that have built-in fans in them. And that's typically going to, to keep your temperatures more closely in check than a fixed RPM fan. However, that's also going to lead to increased noise levels as the temperatures increase. So just to experiment with sound a little bit, I actually took both of the fans on the GPU and the radiator and uh, re-enabled the auto fan curves that they ship with out of the box and ran the same three tests again just to see what the difference in, in noise levels was. And here it is. So clearly you can hear how dramatically the noise levels increase as we increase temperatures in various components in, in the system, um, which is why it's important that you have a case that has good airflow to keep temperatures low so you can also lower those noise levels. To pull some numbers from that exact sound test, when we had 0% tape on the case, our GPU fans were at roughly 46% fan speed. But as soon as we cut it off with 90% tape application, we ramped all the way up to 67%, which is uh, reflected in the noise test that you just heard. So uh, definitely some, some big, uh, some big differences there. Moving on to our average GPU clock. Now this is an NVIDIA card using uh, a version of GPU Boost, which automatically overclocks itself depending on uh, power, voltage, and thermals. Um, and so based on the thermals that we saw in the last slide, you can infer that our clock speed is going to be affected uh, accordingly. So I'm actually gonna start at the bottom of the chart here. At 90% tape, we were seeing on average 1903 megahertz on the GPU core clock. Then as we took off some of the tape to get to 75% surface area, we started averaging 1914 megahertz, which is a 0.57% bump. And then at 0% tape, completely unhindered, uh, we had 1938 megahertz on average, which is a 1.8% improvement over the 90% tape worst case scenario. Fortunately, our GPU clock speeds weren't affected too hard here, but it could have been a lot different had we not been using a top tier GPU with, again, a very effective cooling design on it. So uh, we got pretty lucky there. And finally, moving on to our average frame rates here in Heaven 4.0, 1440p, we saw a frame rate of 77.1 with 0% tape, uh, moving down to 76.5 FPS with 75%, and we actually saw that same score at 90% tape as well. This honestly shouldn't come as a huge surprise when you consider how closely frame rate is tied in with GPU frequency. And since we didn't see a huge discrepancy in the last slide, uh, you wouldn't really expect a huge shift in frame rates here either. Again, this is sort of a tip of the hat to the MSI GPU for uh, being able to sustain relatively decent thermals and performance despite being being in an airflow restricted environment. So hats off there. But let's summarize some things up really quick before we close out the video. For starters, our gaming performance wasn't affected very heavily. Then again, we only tested one application in Heaven 4.0. We had one set of hardware in one configuration. Things could have been a lot different uh, if we had tested more things. Steve from Gamers Nexus has done extensive testing on this. And I think in one video, he, he mentioned that um, based on case selection alone, he's seen FPS swings up to 10%, which 
which is wild. Uh, and it definitely makes you think twice about what case you're gonna get um, because it really does, it really can uh, affect your, your performance in a significant way. What is reflected in today's tests are the thermals. The temperatures were uh, significantly increased as we taped up the front and top of the case, with the most extreme example being a nearly 24% increase in temperatures on our CPU, um, which is obviously going to eat significantly into our overclocking headroom and potentially dump even more heat into our system. So I think the main takeaway from today is that your case is more than just a protective decorative box, it's a cooler and case makers need to start designing them as such, uh, especially if they're anticipating customers filling their cases with hot running hardware, like gaming components, and GPUs and CPUs and stuff. So uh, I thought this was all relatively predictable uh, data that we found here today, but still very interesting to just pull it up and, and chart it out nonetheless. So you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to check out the merch store, which I'm not wearing any new merch right now. I promise I'll wear some in, in a future video soon. Um, but uh, check that out. It's a great way to help support the channel. We have our new heatsink logo on a lot of those items and the quality of everything is really great too. Apart from that guys, feel free to toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Have a good one guys. I will see you all in the next video.